Almighty God, who forgives all who truly repent, have mercy upon you, pardon and deliver you from all your sins, confirm and strengthen you in all goodness, and keep you in life eternal. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Glory to God in the light, and, and peace to his people on earth. Lord God, heavenly King, Almighty God and Father, we worship you, we give you thanks, we praise you for your glory. Lord Jesus Christ, only Son of the Father, Lord God, Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world, have mercy on us. You are seated at the right hand of the Father. Receive our prayer. For you alone are the Holy One. You alone are the Lord. You alone are most high, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. The Collect for the Sixth Sunday after Trinity. Let us pray. Merciful God, you have prepared for those who love you such good things as pass our understanding. Pour into our hearts such love toward you that we, loving you in all things and above all things, may obtain your promises which exceed all that we can desire. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who is alive and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. Please be seated for the Who 
grow inwardly while we wait for adoption, the redemption of our bodies. For in hope we were saved. Now hope that is seen is not hope, for who hopes for what is seen? But if we hope for what we do not see, we wait for it with patience. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God.
things get even more interesting when the story concludes with a rather surprising twist in terms of how the farmer reacts to the agricultural mystique of this mysterious enemy. The story raises a lot of questions, some of which we get answers for. But what does it mean? What does wheat stand for? Who's the enemy? And why not we wheat filled in the same way as many of us will be weeding our gardens this summer? All these issues are hanging in the air like a giant question mark. And then Jesus launches into two totally unrelated stories about a mustard seed and a woman baking bread. We didn't hear them this morning because the Gospel reading skipped some verses. The disciples, unsurprisingly, say to Jesus, uh, Master, that was very, very nice to hear about the yeast and the, and the mustard seed, but can we get back to the one about the parable? What was all that about? The parable we heard this morning contains that twist of an enemy purposely sowing seeds in the same field where a farmer has already sown his wheat crop. All farmers, of course, have to deal with weeds. Even those of us who have lawns must contend with things like dandelions. Fortunately, I've got artificial grass now, so I don't have to worry about that. But you might have a neighbour who, like me, used to just let the dandelions grow, go to seed, and then the wind would blow the spores all over the place. But in the case of Matthew 13, the picture is more pernicious and malicious. In this case, the weeds don't show up for all the usual seasons. This time, they've been intentionally so. The farmer and his crew recognise this immediately when they notice that the weeds end up sprouting in rows that are nearly as uniform, straight and neat as the wheat itself. A few weeds here and there in the field, one thing and I suppose that to be expected. But the farmer smells the rats when just one particular type of weed is everywhere. In fact, there's some evidence that the type of weed Jesus had in mind in this parable is one that bears a striking resemblance to wheat, which makes the task of weeding it out all the more difficult, because you could end up grabbing wheat by mistake. Again, the striking feature of the parable is not only that this enemy does the act of counter sowing, but that the farmer ends up saying, just leave it be. Just let them coexist until everything's ready for the harvest. We'll deal with it later. Now there was a post on social media recently along those lines. I don't know if you saw it. It was on a notice board outside of the church and it said, Just love everyone. I'll sort them out later. Signed <laughs> by God. But for now, let's just go about our normal business. Based on this reaction of the farmer, there's three conclusions we can tentatively draw. First, that the weeds and the wheat can coexist. This isn't a situation where the weeds threaten to choke the wheat. The farmer lets them coexist. Of course he can. Second, although a false pre presence and an undesirable view, there's also a hint here that sometimes our perspective and our vision is limited enough that we cannot always sort out the good from the bad and such that by trying to attack what we believe to be the problem, we may end up damaging something good. There are some acts of judgment which we will simply need to leave to God. God will get round to sorting things out in the end. And thirdly, according to this way of presenting the kingdom, the danger for us and the temptation we need to resist is trying to resolve a problem that is apparently not ours to solve. The weeds by themselves won't damage but if we try to tackle the weeds, we might end up damaging the wheat. Now apparently we miss a large point of this parable by skipping over a little word, the word let, that's used in verse 30. The reason being that in Greek, the word let used there is the same word which gets translated as forgive about a third of the times it shows up in the New Testament. If you were to pray the Lord's Prayer in Greek, then when you got to the line, forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us, the Greek word you would say or forgive would be aphes, which is the same word found in verse 13. I will admit I did look that up. <laughs> to forgive in the New Testament is to let something drop, to leave it lie, to set it aside and never deal with it again. So how interesting is it? It is that in this same word getting used, in Matthew chapter 13, chapter uh, verse 30, for what Jesus wants our attitude to be towards the bad stuff around us in this present world. We are to forgive, to be gracious, 
to be loving even towards our enemies, even those who we're pretty sure represent something of the weeds of life. God will deal with them eventually. But that's not how we are to behave, because contained in that tiny word let is the gospel of grace, love, mercy and compassion. Are we to be discerning? Yes. Are we to steer clear of weed-like evil practices of false and false teaching? Yes, of course we are. Are we to witness to this world about the hope that is in us? Yes, indeed. And will that now and again require that we point out what is wrong in society, in the church, in the lifestyle of someone we love? Yes. If we can't change things through gentleness, love, mercy, grace and compassion, then we cannot change. That's an unhappy and perhaps frustrating fact that switching to the violent, strong arm tactics of the world won't do us or Jesus any good in the long run. In that chapter of Matthew, the disciples leapfrog over the mustard seed in these stories, just as our reading has this morning, to force Jesus back to the themes related to fire and brimstone and judgment. Jesus obliged them by predicting God's judgment of the world. We're called to keep on growing quietly, quietly permeating this world and leavening it with the gospel of hope and joy. So let's just take the love of Jesus, the love of that gentle Father, whose advice for now is simply, let it be, so that you can just keep on growing to my Lord. So now let us stand and confess our faith in the words of the Queen. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, True God from true God, because of not in or of one being with the Father, through whom all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, was incarnate from the Holy Spirit and the living heaven, and was made man. For our sake he was crucified and upon his heart. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and sent seed by the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giving of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is worshipped and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy, Catholic, and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. So, in union with Christ and in the power of the Spirit, let us pray to the Father. Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, you promised through your Son, Jesus Christ, to hear us when we pray in faith. This day, dear Lord, we pray for the Church, that we may have that grace mercy, love and compassion with which you change the world. Keep us from being the people who find it too easy to condemn others and help us in all ways to live the life that is worthy of your glory. This day we pray for our bishops and those who lead us especially 
especially pray for Bishop Michael as he must select for us a new Bishop of Stafford. So strengthen Michael our Bishop and all your church in the service of Christ, that those who confess your name may be united in your truth, live together in your love and reveal your glory in the world. Lord in your mercy, hear our prayer. Dear Father, for the world for which your Son has come and died, pray for those things in the world which are not of your will and do not resemble your kingdom in heaven. We pray especially for those who lead us and at this time for all those who are responsible for taking decisions about the global pandemic of COVID-19. We pray for our Queen and for our government, for all our political leaders. Guide them in the ways of your Holy Spirit. Bless and guide Elizabeth our Queen, give wisdom to all in authority, and direct this and every nation in the ways of justice and of peace that we may honour one another and seek the common good. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for Stone, for our friends and neighbours, especially for the people we find difficult. We pray that by your spirit of mercy, love and compassion, we may help to change our community by our words and actions, even this week. Give grace to us, our families and friends, and to all our neighbours, that we may serve Christ in one another, and love as he loves us. Lord, in your mercy, hear yeah. our prayer. And comfort and heal all those who suffer in body, mind and spirit. Especially we pray for the people for whom we pray week by week. Elsie Richardson, Vera Tompkinson, Neil and Pat Wynn, Gary Kelsall, John Richardson, Peter Bowler, Catherine Ritchie, James Pascal, Miles Brain, John and Anne Shuttleworth, Margaret Wright, Molly Wright, Norman Latham, Mary Lee, Gillian Wright, Carl Hartley, John Hargreaves, Pauline Levins, Val Morris and Alan Holmes, and of course, for our friend after his operation this week, Philip Neeson. Give them courage and hope in their troubles and bring them the joy of your salvation. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Hear us as we remember those who died in the faith of Christ. Mary Townsend, Gren Deakin, Margaret Baker and Vera Smith. According to your promises, grant us with them a share in your eternal kingdom. So rejoicing in the fellowship of St Michael and St Wolfhard and all your saints, we commend ourselves and the whole creation to your unfailing love. Merciful Father, accept these prayers for the sake of your Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Amen.
that we might use them in your kingdom and your service. In the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen.
we worship you, Father Almighty, in songs of everlasting praise. Blessing and honour, glory and power, be yours forever and ever. Amen. Let us pray with confidence as our Saviour has taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. We break this bread to share in the body of Christ. Though we are many, we are all one body, because we all share in one bread. Draw near with faith. Receive the body of our Lord Jesus Christ, which he gave for you and his blood which he shed for you. Eat and drink in remembrance that he died for you, and feed on him in your hearts by faith with thanksgiving. Jesus, Lamb of God, have mercy on us. Jesus, bear our sins, have mercy on us. Jesus, Redeemer of the world, we do not presume to come to this your table, merciful Lord, trusting in our own righteousness, but in your manifold and great mercies. We are not worthy so much as to carry up the crumbs at your table, but you are the same Lord, whose nature is always to have mercy. Grant us, therefore, gracious Lord, so to eat the flesh of your dear Son, Jesus Christ, and to drink his blood, that our sinful bodies may be made clean by his body, and our souls washed through his most precious blood, and that we may evermore dwell in him, and be in us. Amen.
let us pray. God of our pilgrimage, you have led us to the living water. Refresh and sustain us as we go forward on our journey in the name of Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Almighty God, we thank you for feeding us with the body and blood of your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him we offer you our souls and bodies to be a living sacrifice. Send us out in the power of your Spirit to live and work to your praise and glory. Amen. The peace of God which passes all understanding Keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God and of his Son, Jesus Christ our Lord, and the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, Son and Holy Spirit, be among you and remain with you always. Amen. Amen. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord. In, in the, the name, name of Christ. Christ. Amen. Amen.